Welcome back everyone to Piney Plays a Minecraft Skirmish and you may be wondering what am I doing back here at Thongolhot? And that is that I think I've finally come up with a solution. Might not be a perfect one, but a solution to the question of what I'm to do with these ballasti, which are rather non-functional at the moment. And my decision for that is to try let me get some... surely I have some dirt here somewhere. Alright, I will use one of these things. And Alright, let's get one of these out here and let's get a little... to so get into position because I don't... I think that if I'm not in position I won't be able to get this out here. But I'm going to place a dropper right here. And let's get rid of that. do is use the dropper as my firing mechanism. So I'll drop some red wool here. You may be wondering why red wool? And that is because in the actual skirmish they have some sort of well I don't know what the exact contents of the ammunition are but they but the ammunition is on fire. So therefore I decided that the best thing to do for that then is to and I'll pl place a button right next to it, and I'm able to now fire my... Now, I would just love it if these things were able to shoot more than three squares away on a regular basis, because my X's now are quite out of place. But, at least I'm able to fire now, and that's a step in the right direction. Now, I had already done it for this one. So I have a couple of X's to move, it looks like. And I just have oh, one more. This is a battlefield. Take your wool. Alright, this is a battlefield. You shouldn't be going around doing all that. Alright, and let me just... that there and get her and get her dropper here put in some red wool boom <laughs> oh poor sheep <laughs> and I should be ready to oh I guess I should get a button on here first no I went to oh there you go now I got my button Well, yeah, there you go. And now I have a firing ballista. Probably not the best. Maybe I could do something else with redstone wire or something like that in order to put it at a more typical location for artillery. Like, I have a feeling that's a precarious spot, so maybe I can move it there, but then I would have to play all sorts of redstone wiring things. But at least that is a good step in the direction. But that is not going to be the main bit of today's episode. That was just to take care of a little unfinished business, because we have some new business up over at the icy crevasse. So therefore, I will take a cut for a moment, and I will meet you down over there. We have arrived, and it's time to start with our ice. Let's first have a quick look as to the current state of our area. We've I've made a little progress in shaping it. There's probably a ton more shaping to be done. But it's hard to decide exactly what I'm going to do on this one in advance. So therefore, my first goal then is to get the ice on this coming down here. Now I widened this down to be 5 wide. Now the reason why I made it 5 wide was so that I could be able to have it 3 wide with the snow on either end. That's so that way it could actually be three wide. 
And that's the entire plan, is to be three wide, but I'm going to have a wall of snow on each end. Because no matter what I do, it's going to be a little bit narrower in the end than it is at the start. All right, so therefore, starting out with the middle three first, before doing everything else. That way, I'll be able to have a way of getting back up. I know technically I could do it one across, but I think this should do. I've been known to make it difficult for me to get back up because I've made everything two up and I don't have anything that allows me to double jump or anything like that. Though, actually I guess I should take that back because after my after I broke off and had a little break, I ran into an Enderman. And in fact, because I had started running into them yesterday while I was preparing for this, I decided to start carrying a pumpkin with me just in case. And I did. And I don't know if the pumpkin helped me in keeping the Enderman from jumping away, but I was able to kill it and get an Ender Pearl. So I do have an Ender Pearl. And that, at least, should be able to help me if I ever get into a real emergency on having to get somewhere that's very hard to reach. I'm not too sure what everybody uses their ender pearls for. They probably use them for some nice, good, exotic endgame stuff. I have a feeling I almost likely wind up using it for some sort of emergency thing. So I think this is the first time I got one of those on this world. Alright, let's see. Alright, so now I have a 5 y stair. As I said, I'll be covering up the sidewalls so that they won't be, so that all we see is the ice along the side and won't be seeing any of this varied color stone because the idea is that the grass is all covered with ice. And that means quite a bit of, that makes it go a little bit better. See, I've already gone through two and a half stacks of this, so when I said that it won't be long before I ask where did all my wool go, it looks like that time is going to be even closer than I had imagined. <laughs> because I'm already going through quite a bit of this stuff. All right. Down here, down there. That's why I brought extra stacks with me. This is why I would been going around collecting wool all over the place because I knew it would be quite a bit of it and looks like even with that I underestimated things a little bit. So I'll probably be spending between episodes gathering a great deal of wool. I probably should get a very large white sheep farm somewhere. I know I do have the one that's near Thongolhod. In fact, some of this wool came from that farm down there, and I'll probably be making a few more trips there. I also was making trips there for red wool for the ammunition that I had been making. I don't know if there's any better form of ammunition that I could have made. I know one could used arrows, but I certainly don't have anywhere near enough arrows in order to... Well, that's as far as I'm going to go down on that side. I don't have anywhere near enough arrows in order to make a decent job of ammunition. Alright. But that's another possibility. There we 
go. And I am going to have to do some from up top also because he either that or probably I'll just cut out a lot of that dirt up there because I figure all that dirt probably is have some of the side slope down a bit might be a good idea. We'll see how that works. Oops. All right now. And I think I'm going to run out of wool before I run out of daylight. Yeah, because this is still going to be my little hidey hole. But of course, I have to make it so that it actually fits in with the skirmish. So what I'm going to do there is to do it as if we had a little entrance here. So therefore have all that blocked off. I'll probably need a torch here. Put this here so I can make sure I have some light since I'm about to cut this off. Good, but this is my little resting position. I probably should maybe add a chest or two here also at some point. But this is my lower end base where I can go when things are... If I'm in the middle of building and it gets to be night where I could... Oops. That's, that's the place I wanted to leave open. Make it look like a cave opening. Because there are a few caves off on the side on the icy crevasse, so it's... All right, so therefore it will be reasonable. So I will have to, of course, cover these ends with ice also. And, and the floor, oh, fun. Well, when I'm deep, at least the near floor, the far floor I could probably get away with being it since that section doesn't need to look like it. I just I'm gonna mainly worry about the outside bit. And speaking of getting late, it looks like this is what I mean. Yeah, I'm here too busy talking and placing it, and now it's late and I can use the bed without having to worry about going all the way back to base and it is a good time to eat. Good. So now I'm coming down here. Yeah. All right, but the stuff that's visible is going to have to is definitely going to have to change color since we don't want any of the visible stuff to be. S if, it, if it's visible from the outside, it needs to be replaced by the wool to make it look like it's snow. Not that white wool is probably the most convincing snow in the world, but that's an entirely different matter. All right, now. Yeah, okay, we've got this stuff here also. Here, and there, down there. Oh, okay, looks like there's another cave up there. Oh, fun. All right, now. Okay, and how's this looking now? Yeah, because I can see this all the way out here. So, one, yeah, I'm going to need one more layer for that. Sorry, Torch. I know you got mood once. You thought you were done being mood, weren't you? No, wait. Nope, not done yet. And, oh yeah, the floor. 
the floor. Oh, do I have any more wool left? Yes. Though my guess earlier that I was going to run out of wool before daylight was certainly wrong, because I ran out of daylight first. Good. Actually, wait a moment. I'm going to need to conserve wool as much as possible. What I should have done... Uh, well, I just used cobble then. Throw some cobble in here. Because if I'm right, I can do something to make things a little bit more efficient. Let's hope I'm right on this. Alright, let's see. Carpet. So you get three carpet out of two wool. Slightly more efficient, but not too much. So, alright, down here, down here. Good. And the idea here then is. I can also use this for the floor of the crevasse itself, is to. Rather than removing. The rather oh sorry, two two not three all right rather than removing the blocks there and building over it I could just create a white carpet good and there I have well I still have to worry about that far wall. Because I can see it from here. Now, too bad there... Now, there might be... Too bad there wasn't a wallpaper that I could put on there and make things a little bit easier, but... I don't know the technique for that. All right, good, and... Yeah, okay, there's a little bit more to do, but that gives you an idea of how things are going to be going. And up here. So that's what I'm going to do with that area. And then the next thing after that then is to take care of... Ooh, what all to... Well, probably have a wall there for a little while that I can easily make. It's what to do then next, I think, is start worrying about the floor of this. And down here, well, that's what the carpet would be for. And I will have a large swath and where I will be creating carpeting. So therefore, next time, I will be collecting a great deal of wool, taking care of a couple little extra details on that. Maybe I'll start carpeting all of this. Obviously, this area is going to have to be filled in with actual wool blocks since this is on the border of it, but I could put carpeting around the rest of the area down there. There we go. Good. So I'll be just filling the rest of that. I'll probably fill in the rest of that and get the place carpeted up. And the next time we could worry about what's going off in this direction. So I'll see you then for the next episode where I am going to be creating even more of this crevasse so that it will start to look more and more like it's a nice icy environment. And maybe I could get around to getting rid of those trees up there because the trees will certainly spoil the illusion. How can it be snowy up here if you've got these nice beautiful trees that are in leaf? I'll see you next time then for the next episode of Piney Plays. Minecraft Skirmish.